Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with a really fun video today about how I uh, sort of work backwards and uh, finagle my way into one of my favorite ways to invest in the sports card hobby, which is buying raw cards, uh, grading those cards with PSA, and then selling those cards for a profit. Yes, that sounds easy. Um, essentially, I'm buying low. Uh, then manipulating the cards or adding a certain condition to them, namely a PSA slab, and then selling high. That's the idea. Um, but I want to take you through my step-by-step -step process of, and I, and I don't think this is unique, but this is just me being an OCD detailed nerd. Uh, I want to take you through my process of selecting which cards to do this with, uh, characteristics that I look for, certain products that I limit this to, um, and just kind of take you through step by step my process of running some numbers to determine whether or not there is an arbitrage in the market or whether there's enough meat on the bone, um, you know, based on a couple of different factors to make this type of uh, buy raw grade flip game work for a particular card. So I'm going to switch you over here to, uh, to picture in picture real quick. And uh, so the first thing we have up here is I'm going to use this card as an example. And the reason I'm using it as an example, for those of you who don't know me very well or haven't watched my channel enough, uh, I made a pretty sizable investment in Anthony Simon's uh, cards during his uh, 2018 rookie year when he was extremely off the radar. Um, I think I ended up buying around 4,500 rookie cards. Yes, 4,500 rookie cards back then. Uh, his silvers were about four to six dollars, uh, maybe sometimes seven or eight dollars. Uh, these are these are raw silvers, sorry. Um, and uh, there were no really PSA 10s because nobody knew who he was, so nobody was willing to pay the eight or ten dollars to PSA to grade those cards. Doesn't that sound uh, delicious and wonderful? Wouldn't it be nice if PSA was still grading at eight or ten dollars? Of course, we'd probably be waiting ten years for our cards if that was still the case. Um, but I'm using Anthony Simons as an example, and so. The first thing I do is I like to identify a prospect to do this with. I've done it with Simons. I've done it with Fox. I've done it with Jalen Brown. I've done it with Tatum. I've done it with Mitchell. I've done it with Ben Simmons. I've done it with Doncic. I've done it with Morant. Uh, I've done it with Kevin Porter Jr. I've done it with Garland. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I also did it on a very small scale with Chris Dunn. Uh, so uh, not all home runs. A couple of doubles in there. Um, uh, you know, uh, a couple of other players I tried to do it with, like DeJounte Murray, and I gave up on him too early when he tore his ACL, and I sold those cards for a minimal profit, so I bought raw, low, sold raw, eh, a little bit of a profit, and got out of that. I wish I'd have kept those, uh, all of those raw silvers uh, and base prism because I could have made a fortune. But uh, anyway, uh, let me just take you through it. So so the analysis here is we got to figure out how much a raw card, uh, a centered raw card on eBay for Anthony Simons costs and then figure out what a uh, what the average PSA 10 sells for and then we've got to examine uh, what the average gym well what the gym rate is for that particular card and then just kind of work within a framework to determine uh, and just kind of work backwards to determine whether or not there's enough uh, return on investment in there to make a bulk buying experience grading and then flipping worth it right uh, you want to know if it's worth the time because this is not a quick easy deal it requires experience it requires expertise it requires identifying the correct prospect uh, so a couple of the things that that we want to um, keep in mind is how much does an average raw card cost and how much expertise or experience do you have uh, in a particular product and a particular parallel of that product in identifying uh, through the pictures on ebay uh, whether that card has a how do you how do you maximize your chances of grading that card and, and getting a gym mint PSA 10 in return, right? It's not a perfect science uh, Remember grading is subjective in the first place uh, but uh, it's going to require some expertise and some you know experience and in, in looking at cards on ebay for instance you know you'll pull up auctions auctions are probably going to be the best way to get the card at the best price right now um, but you need some experience you know zooming in on these pictures you know is this a scuff mark right here on the left is it centered that's the first thing i look at is is it centered if the card's not centered i move on i don't even consider buying the card i never buy our cards that i know are not centered this one's got a few issues top to bottom there should be a little more space there i know this because 
because I bought so many of these cards. It looks decent left to right. Uh, I would worry a little bit about the booger marks all over the surface that I'm seeing here. Um, so I can't tell if those are on the card or not. If I if I don't like the pictures or I don't feel perfectly comfortable with it, you know, edges and corners are pretty easy to tell. Centering is pretty easy to tell if you're familiar with the particular card and the product and the parallel. It's the surface that kind of gets you. But that is... Uh, what I call a cost of doing business. Remember, this is a war of attrition. I'm not talking about buying two of these cards. I'm talking about buying, well, in my case, 200 uh, silver raw prisms his rookie year. Um, the other thing I should mention is it's much easier to snag these cards of these prospects during their rookie season because eBay will be flooded with those cards, right? Especially under the radar prospects like an Anthony Simons was in 2018. So I literally click buy it now on four to 5,000 Anthony Simons rookie cards, primarily prism, select, and optic. Um, during his rookie season, well, primarily Prism during his rookie season, but also a lot of autographs and some other stuff too. But but we're sticking now with basically the Prism Silver game. I'm using this as an example. I'm not saying go buy silvers. I'm not saying go do this. I'm simply saying how I back my way into it. So finding the right raw card and figuring out what your entry price is going to be is, is issue number one. Um, I, I've done a little bit of research and I've got this pulled up on the screen. Um, based on my research right now, uh, it looks like they're, I'm going to put in there $40 each, right? I looked at eBay sold items here and uh, wait where to it go it's somewhere in here sorry I had it um, no there it is right here eBay sold items you know you can see uh, this one sold for 50 uh, this one sold for 37 um, if we keep scrolling through here, normally I would use card ladder and go to raw, but card ladder doesn't have raw Anthony Simon silvers. It would have made it a hell of a lot easier for me to just look at every data point to figure out what the raw sells for. Um, but I've got to do it with eBay sold comps 31, 40, uh, you know, 36, um, 70 divided by two is 35, 37, 30. So I used a huge high number here. I just overestimated with the conservative $40. I think 40 is high. I think your average price point is probably more like 33, but I'm going to use 40 for our example. I'm going to buy 25 of these for 40 bucks. I am remember, I'm only buying cards that I can tell on their face are well centered uh, with decent corners and edges. Again, the surface is really tough. Even with high def images, if there's a little fleck of dust on the penny sleeve, you can't tell. So really you want to look for the cards that are not in the penny sleeve uh, so you can really tell what's on the surface and what's not. But let's use 40 for our entry price here. 25 times 40 is a thousand bucks. So you're in for a thousand bucks to buy 25 raw Simons Prism Silvers. That's right now, okay? We're not talking about 2018. I could have been in for a hell of a lot less than that, about 125 bucks. But right now you're in for about a thousand bucks. The PSA grading fee, right now I'm going to use the 50 bucks. I'm going to assume we win the economy submission event. And so you can submit it 50 bucks. I've won, I think, two out of nine. So this is no guarantee, but we're using 50 for our PSA grading fee right now. There are some rumors, not rumors, but there has been a lot of heat and a lot of talk about PSA getting some value and bulk pricing back by the end of the year at the $25 mark. I'll believe it when I see it. I'm very hopeful, but we'll use $50 for now. The reason I only have 20 for my quantity is because we're going to assume I get 25 cards back over a, you know, a, a little bit of time. Let's say it takes a week or two weeks to accumulate 25 cards. And out of those 25, we're going to say... I missed, right? I missed on 20% of them. So 20% of them weren't as centered as I thought, or they had a bad corner, or they've got a scratch on the surface, right? Which is not uncommon for silver prisms, or there's some kind of, you know, scuff marks or whatever. So five of them are not what I would call grade worthy. So we're only going to grade 20 out of the 25 at a price of 50 bucks each. So that's what? Another thousand bucks. 20 times 50 is another thousand. So uh, we're going to include insurance and shipping. I think I probably overestimated this. I put 80 bucks on there. It's probably more like 45 or 50 or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, I didn't put a lot of thought into that, but I thought 80 bucks was a pretty conservative estimate. So I'm in for 2,080 bucks. So for 2,080 bucks, I've got these 25 cards in hand. I've deemed 20 of them to be grade worthy. Um, and, uh, and so and then the next question to ask yourself, well, really, we, we've asked this question before because I've decided to dive in. But the second question after you figure out what the raw price is, is what is a PSA 10 worth? So the last PSA 10 sold for 295. 
I've got Card Ladder Pro, so I've pulled up the last one month of sales of Simon's Silver PSA 10s, right? So this is the card we're hoping that we get back from PSA. We're hoping we get back a 10. They're not all going to be 10s. We're going to look at that in just a second. But this is the card that I want. Uh, the average is what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use the last one because the last one was the highest sale out of the last 10. Um, these cards have gotten way over 300, right? And so that's the beauty of buying a prospect. If you look at the last six months, these cards got to 325, right? So Simons has been on a little wild ride. He had a monster year. Everybody knows that. Again, I'm here hyping Simons. I've got a humongous Simons collection. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, this is a card that I chose to use for this video and a player I chose to use because I'm super familiar and I'm about to tweak some of these numbers to show you how it worked for me. Uh, but we want the PSA 10. I'm going to use, uh, let's see, the average is 233 of the last 10 sales. So for my spreadsheet, as far as the value of the PSA 10, I'm going to use 236. Then we also want to know the value of the PSA 9, right? Because we're not going to get all 10s. So we want to know what the value of the PSA 9 is. The average value of a PSA 9, it looks like 48 bucks over the last month. They've been steadily declining, as you can see, 31% down. Let's say 48 bucks. I used uh, 48 bucks for my average price, right? So I used 236 for the tens, uh, 48 for the nines, uh, PSA eights. I put 20 bucks on there. It, you might be able to get more. You might be able to get less. I have no idea. I used 20 bucks. I felt that that was a pretty conservative estimate. I think I could probably get a little bit more than 20, but again, we're, we're, we're not talking about very much difference here. So I'm going to use 20 for the raws. I feel like I can get 33 bucks back because I just bought them for 40 bucks, right? So if I buy for 40 and I sell them, pretty aggressively, maybe in a lot or whatever, I can probably get 33 bucks back. Uh, so that's the first question you ask yourself is, uh, you know, picking out the card and finding out the margin between the raw and then the PSA 10 and then the margin between the raw and the PSA 9. It's very unlikely you'll get a PSA 8 on one of these ultra modern cards. And let me show you why. The next question you have to ask yourself is, what are the odds that I get a PSA 10 back? Well, that's going to depend on a few things, right? Uh, how uh, familiar you are with this particular product and this particular card. Uh, identifying clean RAWs, right? How good are you at identifying clean RAWs when you search eBay? I've done it probably 10, over 10,000 times now, so I'm getting better at it. I'm not perfect. Um, you can only do so much. It is not a perfect science when you're examining pictures of cards on eBay, okay? It's not a home run. You're not always going to get it right. You're not going to, you know, buy 40 cards and all 40 of them look like they can pick PSA 10. It doesn't work that way. There is going to be some attrition there, right? And there's going to be some cast off or some waste, as they call it um, in the business world. So I've pulled up uh, on PSA the pop report for this particular card. Here it is in Silver Prism right here, right? This is the row. Uh, 1,661 have been graded. I've graded 1,600 of them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I've exaggerated. I'm just kidding. I've probably graded about 175 of the 100 of the 1,600. But nevertheless, uh, 1133 have graded PSA 10. Uh, 506 have graded PSA 9. And like I said, it's very unlikely you're going to get an 8, 7, or 6, or whatever. 14 out of 1,661 have graded an 8. So it's not likely if you send 25, you probably won't get any 8s back. You'll probably get 10s and 9s, but you could. And so I've, you know, I've accounted for that in my spreadsheet here with, I've assumed that one out of the 20 that I thought had a chance at 10 are going to come back as a PSA 8. I, I don't think that's likely, but it's possible. Uh, if you divide 1133, uh, by 1661, you come up with a 62, 68.2% uh, gem rate. Okay, I can speak from experience. I know for a fact that in one of my submissions, I submitted 110 raw Anthony Simon Silvers, and I got back 88 PSA tens. So this card does grade particularly well, or at least it has in my experience. So 88 out of uh, 110 is much higher than 68.2. I'm using the average gem rate, right? I'm using the average based on all of the ones that have ever been submitted to PSA. Now, something to keep in mind, you're probably gonna be getting uh, a little bit lower gem percentage now, four years later, than you would back then for a couple reasons. Number one, PSA is grading a lot harder, okay? No matter what they say, they're lying if they tell you they're not. They are much more strict than they used to be, period, end of story. I'm not gonna sit here and argue about it. If you wanna comment that they're not, that's fine, but you're wrong. Uh, I know because I've got a 10,000 card sample size proving that they're grading much harder now than they were in 2018. Number two, all of the clean ones, could possibly have been picked through. So some of these raw cards that you're looking at on eBay now, right, there's a smaller sample size, right, because there's fewer available on eBay. 
compared to his rookie year when everybody was trying to push these things back in the market and recoup their costs from opening these wax. So uh, you're also going to have cards that might have been picked through. So somebody like me or you watching this video might have already pulled these cards in, examined them, and these could be the waste, right? These could be the attrition. This could be the cards that we're putting back in the market that we deemed were not grade worthy. So that's where your, your personal expertise and experience and, uh, and, and finding super high crisp quality pictures and asking questions of a seller on eBay comes into play to try to minimize that risk. So you can get as close to this 68.2 uh, gem percentage as possible. So we're going to use 68.2 as our gem percentage because I think I'm better than most grading. So I think I'm going to get 68.2%. Like I said, I got mm, closer to 83%, but we'll say 68.2. So out of my 25 cards, right now we're back on our spreadsheet here. I've deemed that five of them were raw waste, right? So these cards, I'm not sending to PSA. I didn't pay for it up here, right? I only sent 20 to PSA. I'm going to resell these five cards for 33 bucks each. That's seven bucks less than I paid for it. So I'm taking a $35 loss, plus I'm losing on eBay fees and things like that. So these are a loss, right? But I'm going to recoup some of my money. I'm going to get about 150 bucks back, something like that. But 33 bucks, the gross sales price for that would be 165. Uh, PSA 10s, I think I'm going to get 13 out of 20 because that is uh, right at the 68.2%. Okay, so 13 cards come back PSA 10 on average at 236 bucks. Remember, we looked at this for the PSA 10s. Could it be more? Absolutely. And that's why I love using prospects like Anthony Simons because by the time these cards come back from PSA, you know, the player you choose is crucial, right? If you chose Chris Dunn, you're going to take a bloodbath, right? Even if you get all PSA 10s, you might get crushed because his cards might be worth half as much. But if Anthony Simons goes bonkers and they trade Lillard this summer, you know, come next October, if you've got these cards in hand in October, this could be a $350 card. Well, that changes your margin drastically. And we're going to look at that and do a little tweaking in just a second. Um, but I use 236. Remind, reminder, you can see on your screen here that 233 is about the average. I use 236. Six is my average. The last one was 295. So uh, again, remember, you're not just betting on your ability to grade cards. You're also betting on the actual player whose face and body appears on the card. That's important. If you get the prospect wrong, this thing's going to go to heck in a handbasket really quick. If you get the prospect right, you could hit a massive grand slam home run uh, like I happened to do with Simon's way back when. Uh, and then we'll talk about strong hands. Hashtag strong hands. Hashtag diamond hands, which is another conversation for another video. How long are you willing to hold this prospect? How much do you truly believe in this prospect? Or are you going to dump him when you get like a 20 to 25% return? That's another video for another day. Uh, I got 13 PSA 10s. This is hypothetical, remember. Let's say on average, I'm going to get 13 PSA 10s at 236. That's a 3,068 gross revenue. I'm going to get six PSA 9s at 48 bucks a pop. Remember, we looked that up. 48 bucks is the average, 49 really, we use 48, whatever, that is 288 more dollars, and then one PSA 8, like I said, I just wanted to put it in there just in case, so I swung and totally missed on that one, I just did not identify it, or did not clean the card properly. How we clean cards, how I particularly clean cards, and how my minions in my army of Cajuns cleans cards is, uh, is like... It's kind of like Colonel Sanders' uh, crispy chicken recipe from Kentucky Fried Chicken. I can't, I, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Uh, so we're going to keep that in-house. Um, I have my ways of doing it. Everybody has different ways. Some people put lotion on it and weird ointments and crap like that. I don't know. And there's some really cool Instagram accounts out there on how to clean cards. I've got my way. I don't use any foreign substances. I use microfibers. I use a jeweler's loop. I have a microscope. Um, you know, I'm very careful with how I do it. I have my methods. But like I said, that's top secret stuff. There's no way I could share that with you. I'd have to kill you. Uh, so the gross fair market value for all of your 25 cards, including the five you had to send right back into the wild, is 3,541. Now, if we're going to sell these on eBay, I've factored in a 15% cost to uh, pay eBay fees. Uh, buy shipping materials, let's just say, right? I mean, bubble mailers are not that expensive. Cardboard, you can go get it anywhere. And then blue painter's tape is not that expensive. Yes, you want to you want to ship these cards in team bags as well. So you're going to factor that in a little bit. But really, we're not talking about much expense for 20, you know, 20 cards that we're going to sell once we get these back from PSA. Uh, so 531 bucks, boom, gone out the window if you sell it on eBay. Now, what are our other options? My slabs, it's 1%. Uh, 
Comp C. Eh, nobody really does that anymore, especially not with slab cards. Um, you know, there's a bunch of other seller platforms out there I'm not super familiar with. You can sell it through PWCC Auction. You can sell it through Golden. You can sell it through wherever. I don't really recommend auction houses for cards of this dollar value. These are uh, what I would call commodity cards. And so I would first try to move these cards on Facebook or Instagram. I'm not on Twitter or TikTok, and I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I would try to move these cards in one bulk sale uh, just to save time because time is money, especially in my life with my family and my jobs and my companies I own and you know, getting kids to practices, time is money. So there is definitely an amount of money I would sacrifice to save time, right? The older you get, the more time matters. Uh, and the less money matters, believe it or not. Trust me, young guys, you will get to that stage where time means more to you than money. Uh, God God willing, you'll get there. Um, I know I'm getting there. Uh, but we take out 531 on eBay. Worst case scenario, right? If you can sell these things on Facebook and, and, and Instagram, you're talking about 31 instead of 531 because you're not paying a sales platform fee. Uh, that would yield a net revenue of $3,010, okay, with these numbers that we've used, which are very conservative. Uh, so we paid in, remember up here, we paid in a total of $2,080 to buy these raw cards, and we have net profit of $3,010. When we subtract what we purchased, our actual uh, total net profit would be $930. That's not a bad investment. 930 bucks is a 44.7 return on a $2,080 investment. 44.7% return on investment, or ROI, or net profit, or whatever you want to call it. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good day right there. A pretty good couple weeks uh, for a little bit of time and energy. Uh, making 930 bucks for every 2,000 you spend is nice. If you spend 10,000, now you're making 4,500, almost 5,000 bucks. Now you're starting to get somewhere. But here's what I want to show you, and this is the beauty of it. Okay, uh, this is with PSA being at 50 bucks. Let's say value pricing comes back. Okay, nobody says you can't go buy these raw cards right now. But let's say you're aggressive and you select only the best of the best and you buy them at the average, not my conservative 40, okay? Let's say you buy them at 33 bucks a card. And let's say PSA value pricing comes back at 25, okay? Now your investment is 1400. Uh, and let's say, let's say you do a little bit better. Let's say you do about 75%, right? Let's change this to 14 and let's change one more PSA five, one more nine becomes a 10. And now you've got, <clears throat> A 1765, that's a 125% return on your money. That is more than doubling your money after fees. That is relevant. Uh, that doesn't exist anywhere in the world except for sports cards in my experience. Um, so uh, now let's take it another step further. Let's say we don't use the 236. Uh, let's say we use the last sale price of 295. Or let's say you sell these cards. Let's say you sell these cards for... 315 because uh, you know Simons has a run up right we'll leave the raws where they are we'll change these to 70 and we'll say this PSA 10s are 315 come October because they trade Lillard it's Simons show they hand him the ball he's the point guard of the day his usage rate is out the wazoo he's got some young guys with him uh, now look at your return now you're doubling your money right you're tripling your money 2,798, you invested 1,405, you're gonna profit 2,798. That's pretty impressive, fellas. Um, anyway, those are my numbers. Now what's really crazy is, I did a much larger quantity than 25, and my purchase price for these raw cards was on average about six bucks. And my grading fee back in the day was eight bucks. Now look at the return on investment. I know for a fact I sold my Anthony Simons PSA 10 silvers for right at 300 bucks, probably about 290 to 300 bucks uh, when they peaked. Uh, this was first quarter of this year when he finally got the ball and everybody was injured and out or whatever. So now look at that return, right? So getting the prospect right is almost as important as knowing what the hell you're doing when you buy them, knowing what you're doing when you clean them, uh, knowing how to select which ones are actually PSA 10 quality cards. And then again, I can't stress this enough. This ain't a perfect science. It's, it's not a zero sum game here. There is subjectivity in grading and I can speak from experience. I've got a video coming out where I got destroyed by PSA. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't change anything regarding my methods or my scrutiny. Sometimes you just get punched in the nether region. Um, 
So anyway, I hopefully you guys like this video and that's kind of helpful for you all. Um, here's some uh, reminders of the, the important stuff, right? Uh, time. It's not easy. It's not, it's not free. You're going to have to look at and scrutinize uh, on eBay. It's going to take time to select the raw ones you want to purchase. You've got to win. You've got to avoid the temptation to chase the card. You've got to keep your buy point uh, pretty steady where it needs to be. Uh, and then you're going to have to invest a lot of time to find them on eBay, buy them on eBay. Then you're going to have to get those cards. You're going to have to unpack them. Cut open the bubble mailers. By the way, recycle all your bubble mailers and all your supplies. There's no reason not to. Even people that buy big cards recycle all that stuff because it sucks to go to the store or the post office and buy more. Why would you buy more when people are sending you these in the mail? Just cut them nice and even at top and reuse the bubble mailer. Uh, it's going to take time to clean the cards. Or if you've never done it, it's going to take time to watch YouTube videos all over the place and figure out which ones are legit and which ones are full of BS uh, to learn how to grade properly um, clean your cards. So it's going to take time investment. It's going to take capital. You need a thousand bucks, right? I mean, you wouldn't have in 2018, you'd have needed 390, but it's not 2018, it's 2022. So if we went back to our original numbers, you're going to need a thousand bucks. You're going to need maybe 2000 bucks, depending on how large, how big a swing you want to take. Uh, so you got to have the capital. You can't do it with a few bucks. You got to have a few thousand. Uh, you need to, you need some experience scrutinizing raw cards on eBay and pictures and selecting the right cards. You need to have some expertise and experience in knowing which sellers are trustworthy and which are not. Uh, you don't want to buy these cards from a low feedback or a low transaction number seller. You don't want to buy these cards from a seller that has red flags. I don't think you have to worry about any Simon's prism 2018 is being fake, so you're not going to have to worry about authenticity. Uh, then you need a jeweler's loop. You can't clean cards without it. So go buy one. They're not expensive. Uh, you will see things using the jeweler's loop that you will not see uh, with the naked eye, no matter how good your vision is. Even Ted Williams would not see what a jeweler's loop could see. And uh, Ted was, uh, you know, the legend, Ted Williams was uh, rumored to have, uh, like, think like 2080 vision or something like that, almost like uh, the vision of a, a hawk. Uh, you need a microfiber cloth, super cheap. Do some research, buy the right one. I use uh, two different types of microfiber cloth. Uh, one of them's a little bit thicker and furrier. And then another one is like the uh, type of microfiber cloth that you use to clean, uh, gog um, you know, spectacles. Not, I'm thinking Kareem's goggles. Kareem used microfiber to clean his goggles, of course, uh, or windshield wipers. Uh, but the microfiber you use to clean like uh, reading glasses and glasses and stuff like that, you're going to need experience and expertise cleaning raw cards, right? You got to watch videos. You got to learn or go find somebody who does this a lot and then uh, sponge off of them. Pet, buy their lunch. Ask to come over and watch them clean their cards. And different cards are cleaned in different ways, guys. Paper cards are not cleaned per se, the way that chromium type cards are. I selected this particular card for a reason because you can take a card that's raw like this and you can clean it and you can increase drastically your chances of getting a PSA 10. So I didn't choose this card on accident. Um, again, I'm not saying silver prisms the way to go or the only way to go. You could do this with gold prisms if you could find enough of them, whatever, dude. You know, whatever floats your boat. I just know it's easy to get in and out of silver prism cards. This is what I'm getting at. Um, you need some experience choosing whether a card's PSA 10 worthy. Even if you know how to clean them, if you clean all 25 cards and you submit cards that have no chance of getting a PSA 10, 10 even on a good day, you're going to take a hit. So you don't want to do that. You need some experience on that. And this, this is trial and error stuff, guys. I learned by doing and I screwed some stuff up and I got some bad grades back and then I figured out why and I closely examined them. And then I, you know, some of them I cracked them and resubmitted and I knew I was right and I was right. And sometimes you're not. Um, then you need a solid eBay account and or a social media presence or other sales platform so you can liquidate your inventory once you get that back from PSA. So, uh, you know, build up that eBay transaction number. Make sure you always keep as close to 100% feedback as possible. Uh, just do everything the right way. Use common sense. Uh, you know, fight for every positive feedback you can get. And if anybody, even if they're full of it or they're a pain in the butt or they're needling you, uh, or, or, you know, trying to hammer you down. Just do the right thing to make sure you get the positive feedback. Trust me, it's worth it in the long run. And then a social media presence. Tons of followers on Instagram and Facebook uh, helps. Uh, having friends in the right places helps. 
because you can tell them, hey, I've got these 20 Simons PSA 10s for sale, and they can help you move those cards. If you're on Instagram and you're familiar with Instagram, then you know who the Anthony Simons collectors are out there. I mean, I know who collects Simons. I know who collects Donovan Mitchell. I know who collects you know, SGA. I know who collects Kevin Porter. I know who the Jordan collectors are. You figure that stuff out after spending time. That's time. That's part of the time investment. Um, but anyway, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. That's just kind of how I back my way into it. Uh, I'm not telling y'all to go out there and buy Silver Simons, obviously. Uh, you know, as you can see from my return on investment, the ship might have sailed, right? Uh, I did great. I, you know, took a swing and it, it, it all worked out for me on Simons. It has not worked out for me on Dennis Smith Jr. It has not worked out for me on Chris Dunn albeit luckily on a much lower level. It's worked out for me on De'Aaron Fox. It's worked out for me on some Tatums and Mitchells and, and all those other guys that we talk about. And some of them I'm still holding. And that's where we get to the video that I'm gonna do on Diamond Hands about how sometimes, yes, there's something to be said for taking the, the, the profits and cashing in for 20 or 30%, but there's also something to be said for really hanging on to that and making you know this number on your screen here. 977 percent instead of 20 or 30 percent you know uh I, nobody can really tell you the right way to do that that's uh that's you know just gonna have to be a trial and error thing where we all take risks and and some of us are risk averse and they want the short term smaller profits and some of this uh, some of us are very comfortable absorbing a great deal of risk and or uh putting our money to the side until it grows to a level that's sufficient for us to uh to liquidate so um Anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, everything that I talked about today, you know, uh, this was buying a quantity of 25. Uh, it applies if you buy a quantity of 100. Just magnify everything, right? It's just more risk. It's just more capital. It's just more time. But it's also possibly significantly more profit or significantly more loss. So it all comes down to your, your risk tolerance and, and how... Uh, you know, apt you are to take large risks. But anyway, hopefully this video helps you guys out. Again, I'm not telling anybody to go do this. I'm just showing you how I back into whether or not it's worth doing. Like if I wanted to pick a player from this year, like, um, uh, I don't know, Cade Cunningham's a bad example because he's going to have a crazy price point. But, uh, you know, I honestly prefer to do guys like Anthony Simons, guys that I believe in that are a little bit, little bit under the radar. I've got a few of those guys from this class. Uh, again, Panini has to actually release the dang product before I can buy their Prism Silvers um, or their Prism Color Match or their Prism Golds or Oranges or whatever. You, whatever It works for all kinds of different cards, um, but uh, I primarily stick to Prism because it's pretty dang popular. I stick to PSA because it's pretty dang popular and it's got the best return in a slab. So uh, hopefully you guys like this video. I like to share numbers because I'm a dork like that. But uh, anyway, uh, keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby, fellas, and peace.